iPhone 15 versus 15 Pro. The Pro model is the much better choice this year, right? Well, it's actually not that simple because this year, Apple made the regular 15 a very compelling upgrade. But as for the 15 Pro, not so much. You probably know that this smaller Pro model didn't get the new 5X telephoto camera like we got on the Pro Max, but you likely don't know that it's actually missing more upgrades than just that. But wait, this video is actually about the regular 15 versus the 15 Pro after two weeks of use, and there's a lot more to talk about in terms of the real differences that you're gonna experience on a daily basis, so let's get started. First off, we've gotta talk about the design differences this year with both of them coming with the really nice curved edges which feel so much more comfortable in the hands. And as far as the new titanium frame on the Pro model, it actually feels more similar to the regular aluminum chassis than ever before, but keep in mind that it's grade 5 titanium so it's going to be stronger and more resistant to dents and scuffs. But unlike the titanium, it actually seems to have a sort of sheen or shine to it, which looks really nice, but after two weeks, I've noticed so many more fingerprints on the Titanium Pro, which have honestly gotten really annoying. Now, one major upgrade for the regular 15 is that for the first time in years, it actually looks more premium and pro than ever before, thanks to a combination of three design elements on top of the similarities in the frame's finish. Number one is the fact that Apple finally gave the regular 15s a matte textured back, which looks and feels so much more premium, greatly reducing fingerprints on the back glass. Number two is actually the new subtle selection of colors, which looks a whole lot more premium compared to the very saturated, almost toy-like colors of the past. It now just looks more clean and expensive overall. And number three is of course the fact that Apple finally removed the notch on the regular 15 and the displays now look basically identical from the front with the premium dynamic island feature so you can hardly tell them apart anymore. And for those reasons the regular 15s look more pro than ever before. However that's just the surface level because if you look a lot more closely you're gonna notice a huge difference in display bezel size size, which to me is a big deal after two weeks having a more immersive display on the Pro. It just looks so much more premium. But then when we start talking about the display quality itself, Apple for some reason gave the regular 15s basically the same display panel as on the Pros with up to the same crazy 2000 nits of brightness, which I wasn't expecting Apple to do at all. So you're really getting so much more value this year on the regular 15. And then on the other hand, disappointingly, the display has not changed at all on the 15 Pro since it's already quite good, especially since it supports 120 Hertz Pro motion display technology, which makes the display look super smooth when browsing through the web and using apps, especially since it supports 120 FPS gaming. But regardless of all of that, we're starting to see a trend where the iPhone 15 is getting a bunch of really nice new upgrades, while the 15 Pro isn't really getting much changes at all. So with that said, why would people even buy the Pro model to begin with? Well, there are actually some reasons that are really quite convincing, including the new chip and the cameras. But regardless of whether you buy the 15 or the 15 Pro, you're definitely gonna need a good case, like the Ultra Hybrid S Mag from our sponsor, Spigen. It's very durable while coming with a kickstand for browsing or watching movies that's now fully flush with the back, so you get full MagSafe support for charging and accessories like their Valentinus three card wallet, which holds on incredibly well due to the grippy texture on the back. They also have their easy fit screen protector, which has by far the easiest installation I've ever seen with its convenient alignment case. And they've even got their easy fit Optic Pro real glass camera lens protector, which is just as easy to install and looks really cool with camera spec details. But my personal favorite is their teardown case with this awesome 3D component design, which you can 
couple with their Arcfield MagSafe wireless charger with a built-in kickstand for watching videos or standby mode. And you can order all of these amazing Spigen products today by using the links in the description below. Now getting back to the 15 vs 15 Pro conversation, are people buying the Pro model because of the USB-C port that's 20 times faster than the one in the regular 15? Well, probably not because most people are just using AirDrop. Is it because the speakers got much better this year on the 15 Pro? Actually, no. The speaker quality is the same on both the 15 and 15 Pro, while this year only the 15 Plus and 15 Pro Max models got a big upgrade in terms of speaker quality. Is it because of the action button that's exclusive to the Pro models? Maybe, but it's mostly a fun new feature that really gives you a sense of freedom on the iPhone, which we haven't felt in years, allowing you to do actually useful things if you know what you're doing, but no, it's honestly not a deal breaker, it's more of a fun little bonus. The main two reasons are the A17 Pro chip and what comes with that, as well as the cameras, so let's jump right into it. Yes, the A16 chip is already fast, but the A17 Pro is undoubtedly faster, and I know you're gonna say that it literally doesn't make a difference in the real world, but it does. First of all, the Pro models get 8GB of RAM compared to 6 on the regular 15s, which is going to make the phone a bit more responsive in general, especially when multitasking. It's also going to help keep your apps open for longer without resetting them in the background to free up more RAM, so that's always a plus. The A17 Pro also has a bunch of architectural changes to all of the cores, including the CPU having wider data decoders and a bunch of other changes, as well as a new metal shader architecture pipeline for the GPU. And don't forget that the neural engine is basically two times faster, which is going to help with everything including gaming, general performance, and camera software processing as well. And last but not least, we have the upgraded GPU, which now includes hardware ray tracing and metal effects support, which means that with the 15 Pro, you'll have exclusive access to a bunch of real AAA games, starting with the four that Apple recently revealed at their event, while you won't even be able to install them on the regular 15. And not only that, but metal effects support is already here in games like Genshin Impact, greatly reducing the power usage and heat, leading to a better gaming experience with really great quality. And even without all of that, just the fact that the A17 Pro's GPU now has six cores to split the performance load between is actually going to lead to lower clock speeds across the board to achieve the same FPS as with five cores, which will use less power than the A16 if there's an FPS cap like 60 FPS. So basically, buying the 15 Pro will really future-proof your device as more and more games and apps come out. And now, let's get into the cameras, and I've got to admit that the regular 15s got a killer upgrade this year with the new 48 megapixel camera sensor, which now allows for insanely high quality 48 megapixel high photos, as well as the default new 24 megapixel photo output for regular photos and also portraits, which is awesome. Even better, that new 48 megapixel camera sensor means that you now get a new 2x camera button, which actually has incredible quality because it crops into the middle of the sensor and applies software corrections before you take the photo to greatly improve the quality and also allow for 2x portrait shots which was the biggest issue with previous regular models not having that. And yes, the new regular 15s also get the smart HDR5 upgrade, which has been incredible for dynamic range improvements. So this is probably the biggest camera upgrade on the regular iPhones in years. However, the iPhone 15 Pro is still better because the actual 48 megapixel sensor is bigger, so low light is going to be better. And we of course have the 3x telephoto lens for much, much better zoom photos 
and for unique 3X portraits, which look great. And then of course, there's the 15 Pro Max with the 5X lens, which is on a whole nother level. So in the real world, after about two weeks of use, I've really got to hand it to the 15 Pro for the extra freedom and flexibility that you get with that additional 3X lens and the camera improvements. So for that reason, and for the A17 Pro chip, as well as all the other differences I mentioned, it's probably worth spending the extra $200 for the 15 Pro. However, since this is the best regular iPhone upgrade in years, I wouldn't say you'd be wrong for choosing the 15 instead if you're on a budget. I've actually recommended the regular 15 to some family members already because it's just so solid of an upgrade. So my recommendation this year is just to follow your budget and you're gonna be a happy camper unless you're a gamer. In that case, you definitely want the A17 Pro chip in the 15 Pro. So hopefully this video was helpful and if you enjoyed it, definitely subscribe above and check out the Spigen products down in the description below. Thanks for watching and definitely check out one of those two videos right over there. I'll see you in the next one.